The Chief Justice uh, Raymond Zondo implicated uh, the consultancy Bain and Company in that state capture report following the commission of inquiry into state capture. The South African government followed on the UK as our Treasury banned uh, the consultancy from applying for state contracts for 10 years. But in an abrupt U-turn, the UK government seems to have changed its mind. And of course, the pressure that was applied by Lord Peter Hayne, has that all gone to naught? He joins us now on the line from the UK. Lord Peter Hayne, always a pleasure to have you on the show. No doubt you are hugely disappointed by this news. Morning, Bongani, and to your listeners. Yes, I am. And frankly, they've turned on their head, and it's a complete cop-out, because Bain have not fundamentally changed anything. They say in their statement the British government does, issued yesterday, that uh, Bain has admitted that it was wrong in what it did in South Africa in disabling SARS, the revenue service, at President Zoom, former President Zuma's personal instructions in 17 one-to-one meetings, not in his official office where a note could have been taken uh, by his staff, but in his residence, uh, in order to allow his cronies to avoid paying taxes, which other South Africans are liable for. So um, this was a deliberate attempt to undermine the, one of the most important state institutions, the tax agency, and to do so in a way that damaged the whole of the South African state, its ability to raise money and fund the vital services that everybody depends on. It was a premeditated, uh, a, a corrupt activity on Bain's behalf, and that is why two judicial commissions, Bongani, not only the Zondo Commission, as you rightly mentioned, but also the Nugent, that, one. The Nugent Commission, yeah. headed by Judge Nugent, condemned it in, of all the, the companies that were involved and complicit in state capture and corruption, uh, Bain was the worst. I want you to listen to a conversation I had with Stephen York, who's the managing partner at Bain and Co. South Africa, because you use the words deliberate and intentional, right? And that was ultimately the basis of of, uh, this U-turn by the UK government. And that was the key argument Bain have been making about their role in state capture. Have a listen. While we recognize that we made mistakes at SARS, there, there is simply no, um, there was no intent to do any damage or to, uh, or to do any damage or to harm um, the institution or undermine the institution. The independent investigation um, that Baker McKenzie conducted on our behalf reviewed over 250,000 documents. They interviewed over 80 different people. At no point in that, in, as a result of that investigation, did they find that Bain or anyone at Bain had any intention to undermine or harm SARS. That was never the intent. We made a lot of mistakes uh, in respect of SARS. We've done a lot to try and remedy those mistakes. But there were what people saying, identified. Though, that, there were people identified professionals who were to be neutralized and then that in fact did happen. So when you say that there was no ill intent, how do you do that? Because you could argue that was perhaps the most nefarious aspect of your attack on SARS. Those people had their lives, their careers ruined. As I mentioned in my letter, we're committed to South Africa. We want to be a force for good in South Africa. We believe that Bain has a lot of value to add um, our pe- to, to our people, to our clients who we work for and to the communities that we operate in. And that's really what this letter is about. We want to have constructive dialogue. We want to have um, meetings with government, with other key stakeholders like business, civil society to discuss the way forward. And we, we believe that we want to do more for South Africa and believe that we can do more for South Africa. He sidestepped my question, as you can very clearly hear. What makes you, uh, what made the UK government believe them? Well, they've obviously given in to a lot of fine words and and soft soaping. Because remember, there were two judicial commissions that condemned Bain. The Zondo Commission said that it had acted unlawfully. Now, that's not just mistakes. They acted illegally, said the Zondo Commission, and recommended Bain for prosecution. And that is still going through the system. Uh, And instead of recognizing 
which to its credit, it did last year when it accepted my request. Uh, and I went to see the minister concerned in order to persuade him uh, to for the British government to suspend Bain from all public sector contracts because of its activity in South Africa. Um, and they accepted that argument and they did that. And now they've turned on their heads and, and accepted this argument. You see, he said mistakes. This was not mistakes. This was a deliberate attempt to disable the tax collecting agency. President Zuma asked them how to do it, and Bain told him, told him how to do it, and he did it under Tom Moyani, the uh, the Zuma crony who was put into into SARS. Everybody knows this. This is I'm not saying anything new. And two judicial commissions have condemned them. None of the other players, corporates uh, in, involved in the infamous state capture episode under former President Zuma, the McKinsey's, the KPMG's, the HSBC's, the, the Bank of Baroda's, Standard Chartered, SAP, and the rest of them, none of them were singled out in the way that Bain has been. And I think that these corporates who operate across the world, Bain, of course, is uh, originates from Boston in South Africa, in uh, Boston in the United States, but as global operations, not just in London, which is where I focused because that's where I'm living, but also uh, right across the world, they've got to feel the pain. They damaged um, the whole fabric of the country in South Africa. And he says they made mistakes. No, they didn't make mistakes. They deliberately sought to undermine one of the key institutions. And that's not just reprehensible. It, it deserves to be punished, which is what for a brief period the British government to its credit did and has now flipped on its its uh, its head and uh, and withdrawn that. So so what uh, will this know, mean? I, I also so looking at its statement it says that Bain South Africa is not uh, they're not going to do any work with Bain South Africa. Well the British government doesn't do any work with Bain South Africa does it. It does work with Bain UK. This is a a bit of um a frankly spin what does it say about the ability of corporate interests not only i suppose to influence governments but perhaps even go far as go so far as to control them in in some ways well i do think that corporates doing work for government can be very valuable because government is not very good at doing some things in any country and you need the kind of expertise that bain has it's a global a management consultancy, as I say, working right across the world, and it has a lot of expertise, and including, by the way, of its former global partner, Athol Williams, a, a Cape Town boy that it's hounded uh, and punished and forced him to leave the country and ruined his career, instead of actually recognizing as a brave whistleblower that he should have been rewarded. This just one thing after another that Bain has, has, has done, including that, um, frankly, uh, well, that statement, that interview that you had with the Bain head in South Africa, I just find that's disgusting. Uh, what they should have done is owned up, said to the two judicial commissions, yes, we're bang to the rights, we were wrong, we shouldn't have done this. Not that we made mistakes, we shouldn't have disabled, helped disable the South African Revenue Service. If they'd done that, and if they'd come clean, and if they'd paid back all the money, uh, that they earn from state-owned enterprises, and not just the SARS money, which apparently they have, uh, but other the uh, the rest of it, which is ninety percent of of what they earn. If they'd done all of that uh, and and held their hands up properly, but they haven't. They've sought to wriggle out of it, and and I think they should be punished because otherwise these corporates will continue to do this kind of thing. I always make the point, Bongani, that it wasn't just corrupt politicians that damaged South Africa and are still continuing to damage South Africa because corruption is widespread. But it's also the corporates that enabled them to do it, that paid the backhanders, that in Bain's case were complicit and earned fat fees. Uh, this didn't happen just on by politicians on their own. It, it took two to tango. And of course, the corporates know ultimately they will get away with it as they seem to have done here. Lord Peter Hayne, appreciate your time. Uh, and by the way, I did uh, let you know that uh, Lord Peter Hayne has a fantastic new book out. And uh, one of the things that I think is incredible is uh, to watch, uh, the book is called The Elephant Conspiracy, and it's about the dwindling numbers of elephants on the continent, mostly as a result of poaching. Get this, in 1800, there were 25 
5 million elephants in Africa. Uh, it's expected that by 2040, the animals could be extinct. The numbers are under 400,000 at the moment. It's a fictional tale. It's very gripping, and it's certainly worth a, a, worth a read. It's called The Elephant Conspiracy. Current events. Developing stories. Tough questions. Your voice making a difference. This is Breakfast with Bongani Bingwa.